Dawn Swan, and I'm so glad you're back again this week to join me for the video series Relationship Tips with the Pros. In this series, I've been discussing the research of Drs. John and Julie Gottman, two of the leading couples therapy researchers in the United States today. And in this specific portion of the series, we've been looking at the Gottman's research on healthy and unhealthy communication behaviors that they observed in all the couples that they studied. Um, basically, the Gottmans talk about the couples in two categories, the masters and the disasters. And in the disasters, the couples that were not doing well, they identified four very clear negative communication behaviors that were leading to the downfall of these couples. And they call these communication behaviors the four horsemen of the apocalypse, because when you see them with regularity in a relationship, you know the end is near. So in last week's video, we started talking in depth about the first horseman of the apocalypse, which is criticism. And we learned how to use the antidote to criticism, which is gentle startup. So if you want to learn more about that, please look for the video last week on criticism. Tonight, I'm going to be talking to you about the second horseman of the apocalypse, which is defensiveness. Now, criticism and defensiveness go hand in hand. They're kind of like the one-two punch of negative communication behavior. It's only natural when somebody is being critical of you and you feel like you're being attacked or blamed that you would want to protect and defend yourself. And that's exactly what happens when we bring up problems in a critical way with our partner. We evoke that sense of defensiveness and then we get stuck. We get stuck in this negative communication loop of criticize, defend, criticize, defend, criticize, defend. And we don't make any progress toward resolving the problem that was a concern in the first place. So the Gottmans have proposed an antidote or an alternative to becoming defensive. And that antidote is accepting responsibility. Now, you might be thinking, okay, that sounds crazy because how in the world, if somebody's coming at me in a critical manner, attacking me or judging my motives or my intentions, how in the world am I going to accept responsibility for all of that nonsense that they're saying? Well, that's the key. You don't have to accept responsibility for everything they're saying. All you have to do in order to use this strategy is find one teeny tiny piece of what they're saying that you can agree with. You might disagree with 99% of what your partner is saying and how they're saying it. But if you can find the smallest fragment, the smallest grain of that argument that you can agree with, and if you can start by addressing that point of agreement first, it's basically like a Jedi mind trick or like diffusing a bomb. And if you can do it, it will stop the criticize, defend cycle and help you to sidestep that and create a more productive conversation about the problem that you wanna resolve. Now, it sounds simple in theory, but it is ridiculously difficult because how do you keep yourself in a calm state of mind where you can think logically and look for a point of agreement when you feel like you're under attack. That's by far the hardest part. And what it takes is a ton of practice. And I have to tell you, I fail at this more often than I succeed. But in the moments where I can do it, it works beautifully. So the key is that if you are the one feeling like you're under attack, first of all, you're going to have to slow down and really pause before you speak. And in that pause, take some deep breaths, keep yourself calm, and think about this strategy. And think about the question, is there any piece, no matter how small, of what my partner is saying that I can agree with? And can I find that piece and start by talking about that point of agreement? Last week in our video, we uh, used the example of a couple where the wife was really feeling unappreciated and she really wanted her husband to help out with a project on a weekend and he didn't show up the way she wanted him to and so she was angry and she lit into him saying all kinds of hurtful, critical things like, 
you don't care about me, all I am is a workhorse to you, you never help me with anything around the house, you never help with the laundry, you never help with the kids' homework, and I'm just completely unappreciated around here and I'm not going to take it anymore. So that was all the criticism that she dished out for him. And let's just say that he was in a good place and he knew this strategy and he was able to take a few deep breaths and ask himself, is there anything in this argument that I can agree with? And let's say that maybe he realizes that, you know what, I don't help out around the house a lot and I don't really ask her what she needs help with around the house. And he chose to start there. So he might say to her, you know what, honey, you're right about the fact that I don't often help you around the house or with the kids' homework. And if that's something that's important to you, um, we can certainly have a conversation about that. Now, again, super difficult to do, especially when you feel like you're under attack. But if he can do it, you can almost feel the intensity and the energy drain from the conversation. And what he has done is chosen to sidestep that natural reaction of defensiveness and kind of diffuse that bomb and prevent them from getting stuck in the criticize defend cycle. Uh, there's a great metaphor that helps me to understand this antidote or this counter move and that is in a lot of martial arts trainings they teach the concept of not opposing direct force with direct force because when you do that you end up in a locked in head-to-head -head battle and it's really hard to get anywhere. So in some forms of martial art, what they do is teach their students that when somebody's coming at you with force, if you can take that force and absorb it into your body and then allow that force to move through, then you don't end up locked in that head-to-head -head battle and you end up being able to make more progress and to get ultimately to get what you want out of that interaction. So that's how I think about this kind of Jedi mind trick counter move called accepting responsibility. And remember, you only have to find the smallest piece that you can agree with to diffuse that bomb. And then once the conversation is in a more healthy, productive uh, process, then you can go back and address some of the hurtful things that were said, some of the mischaracterizations and the, the problems that came up in that conversation. So I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea of how to use that counter move called accepting responsibility. And I'll look forward to being back with you next week to talk more about the third horseman of the apocalypse, which is contempt. Thanks for joining me.